Hello beer tubers and welcome to yet another beer review with me Peter the master of hoppets today looking at a pretty big white whale or at least a pretty big whale. This is one of the first beers that I ever kind of looked up uh, from the states like rare beer I was like oh man I, I'd love to try that sometime and some, for some reason I never really got around to looking for it like trying to trade for it because I've always had like you know kind of trade guns to trade for, you know, Blobea and different Cantillon and Bleefontaine and releases. For some reason, I never got around to it, but I finally did, thanks to my main man, Joe, from Jaws Arcade. So, thanks a ton to Joe for this one. Uh, you rule, dude. We did a trade last year. This is the last beer I left from that trade, and I can't wait to try it, guys. This is none other than, yeah, you saw the name in the title, The Lost Abbey. Duck, duck, goose. <laughs> American style sour ale aged in red wine barrel. So this is a pretty hype beer from them. It's the 2016 release. I think Joe gave this a hundred, uh, which is really high. Uh, so must be really good. So very hype beer. This is pretty much the Lost Abbey's attempt at making a goose. Uh, uh, goose, 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 goose. It's so like it depends on where you're located in Belgium the way you pronounce it. I've always said Guza. Uh but uh, it's their attempt at doing something similar. It's of course not the same thing because Lambic has to be made in Valonia in Belgium, but it's their attempt. So what they did is they, they, they do I think they do it every three or four years they release it, and it's a blend of uh, different blonde sours that they aged in red wine barrels. I've had one of the base beers for it because it was one of the track beers for uh, the track series they did, or part of it was at least, uh, because I had that when I was at the brewery way back in 2012. But they released this last year. So really big whale, really looking forward to it. As I said, yeah, it's a blend of sours. It's on 7%, so actually fairly close to some of the Belgian Lambics, a little bit higher, but or Gooses, but a little bit higher. But they call it Belgian style sour ale, Asian red bar barrels, or maybe what you'd call an American sour, because they're often not as funky. They don't have that unique funk, but people hype this up so much. I love the new labels too, by the way. They kind of glow, but really looking forward to this one. This is, it's been on my list for a while. It's awesome to finally get to take it. So duck, duck, freaking goose. Yeah, thanks a ton, Joe. So awesome, awesome. So not, not even using it. For a special number, which is a bit stupid, but hey, what ifs? And by the way, guys, do you like my new Ninja Turtle <laughs> Spider Man mashup t shirt? I think it's pretty freaking awesome. Top McFarland reference. <laughs> but can't wait to try this one. Thanks so much, Joe. You rule. Really looking forward to this. So, pours out in the glass a really nice hazy golden yellow color with a nice looking white head. It, I mean, it really looks very similar to a Guza in color. I'm even using that lambic glass with my Fleefontaine and uh, glass, but looks great in the glass. Soft carbonation, doesn't look too intense. That was uh, that that was there, fizzed away quite quickly. But a small white one. Let's check out the aroma <laughs> on the last heavy duck duck goose. Holy shit! There's a lot of red wine on that. Oh, it is quite similar actually. There's, I'm, I'm not really get getting tons of funk. It's just like a very aromatic, fruity, and vinous and oaky quality. Oh, peachy and stone fruit and uh, like lemon. Oh yeah, really peachy. It does have a little bit of that kind of barnyard thing, but it doesn't like the funk isn't as crazy and complex and as in like Belgian uh, Gerze, which is you know the crazy horse blanket and musty old cellar. It maybe has a bit of a mustiness, but. Oh, really nice sweet oaky note and the red wine is so well balanced in it. It's like like the balance of, of red wine vineyard notes is so great because it's not just all red wine. You definitely get like the nice sour uh, fruitiness from it. Maybe even a slight grassiness for some reason. Oh, this smells really, really good. Maybe even like an apricot or like a slight stone fruit but it smells freaking great white wine vinegar. Even red wine when it goes. Let's give Duck Duck Goose from 2016 a taste. Thanks a ton to Joe. Cheers, man. <laughs> Ooh. Oh. Hmm. That is balanced sourness. Like, 
a lot of the American sours really sharp up front and then they die down. It is or just really sharp all the way and super sour. This is one of those you know super sharp up front dies down. Damn, this is this is really fucking good. Oh, such a great balance of the red wine and oak flavor on this. Like it's got like that corky woody red wine type flavor. Uh, maybe a bit of vanilla to it almost. Like I'm getting like a sweetness that's reminding me of vanilla, like or a wheatiness or something. Sour green apple, definitely lots of stone fruit. There's a sweetness to this again. That's around maybe vanilla or a honey esque note or something. Funk is not really there. I mean, the generic kind of barnyard thing, but that's one of my things with the American ones. A lot of oh, so it's so funky. I never really got that from many American sours. This has some subtle, but I think a lot of you know, that also you know funk usually improves with age or gets more complex. But I still think the lambic. You know, Lambic is much better in terms of funk character, if that's what you're after. But this is just, in general, like, such balance of flavors, which is, like, it's got the type of balance you actually find in Grüße. Because that's, you know, a lot of balancing of flavors because it's one, two, and three-year-old Lambic. So this is one, two, and three-year-old American Sour Ale. And that kind of balance, they definitely struck that one in here, which is freaking awesome. I'm loving that kind of red wine, uh, vineyard note, like, red wine vinegar or white wine vinegar. Definitely again the lemon and that kind of grassiness is there. It's really good. Now I don't think it's a hunnitz. Uh, Joe and and Nate gave this a hunnitz, and it's a very high rated American, you know, sour. But I still prefer, you know, the Belgian lambic if we're talking like super complex sours. Uh, American brewers are really hitting it on the nail on doing like the fruited sours and things like that that are just bursting with fl fruit flavors and whatnot. Uh, but the funk is just harder to dial in, and I actually talked with a subscriber about that on the comments. I can't remember your channel, dude, or your name. Sorry, man. But he talked about how he thinks, like, in the future, the Americans are going to dial in more on the funk, which is starting to happen with a few breweries, and they're going a bit now with all the, just, the, you know, just explosion of sourness. But this is really damn good. I remember this <laughs> along with, I think it was Isabel Proximus was some of the, like, the, oh, must-have beers for me way back in the day. Uh, but then we got one crossed off the list. I don't think you can get Isabel or Izzy anymore at all. It's like it's probably one of the hardest beers to trade for. But yeah, this is fucking amazing. Mm. I mean, it is better than some. I mean, it's hard to compare it to Lambic, but if we compare it to the upper echelons of Tlaib uh Tilkin, uh, Cantillon, it you know it doesn't compare. But it does compare to some of the other Lambic producers that. Just doesn't make, you know, as crazy Lambic and crazy good. I'd say that compa it compares to that and it's definitely better than that, actually. So, uh, rating-wise, I'm like a 97 on this. It's a really freaking good sour, but I don't think it's a Hunnitz. I mean, for it to be a Hunnitz, it had to be, you know, close to something like an aged bottle of Amon and Tommy, which is actually a collab, you know, with Tommy Arthur and Lee Montana, which is fucking out of this world. If you have a bottle of that now, drink it. I don't have any more, unfortunately. I traded my last ones, which is stupid. But, yeah, great, great stuff. Awesome that I finally got to try this. It's a delicious complex sour beer. If you guys ever get the chance, definitely check out the Duck Duck Goose by the Lost Abbey. Sour uh, blonde ale or attempt at making Lambic in the stage states. Aged in red wine barrels, really good stuff. Thanks a ton to Joe for trading this one. Awesome to finally get my hands on this bad boy. And definitely let me know what you thought of it, if you've had the chance to try it. And I'd love to hear what you think of aged versions compared to fresh versions. Because this is fresh, it's from 2016. So it's got, you know, a lot of bright sourness and bright characters. I wonder if you get more of a, like, a funky thing when it's aged. But let me know, guys. And yeah, as always, remember to comment, subscribe, check out the Facebook fan page, and Twitter, and Instagram. And give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. It's really awesome to get this well across off the list. Thanks so much, Joe. And uh, I want to say cheers and some delicious sour beer. And see you guys in another beer review.